Hello, 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 hello out there, brothers and sisters. How you doing, Sister Fly? I see you, John Hancock, down there. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sisters. Come on in. Come on in. We got some good content for you tonight. How you doing, Sister uh, Keisha? How you doing? How you doing? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sisters. I'm not going to keep you long, but something that I'm going to talk to you all about. I'm going to impart some uh, good knowledge into you, and you will be able to utilize this when it comes to your relationship. Come on in, come on in, come on in. I love you, brothers. I love you, sisters. Come on in. We got a good show this evening. You don't have to worry about staying here that long. I'm going to get you in and out in a hurry. We'll go ahead and get your... A uh, little popcorn. Sister Flo got a big bag of popcorn down there. Go ahead and chew on lit on that. And we're going to have some uh, little drinks too. Come on up to the front, my brothers. Come on up to the uh, front, my sisters, because I got some good content for you this evening. You're going to love it. I hope that you embrace what I'm about to talk about. We're going to got a few more seconds. Before I get into this uh, content, so come on in, go ahead. There goes some popcorn and soap down at the bottom, my brother and sister. Go ahead and grab it. Go ahead, go ahead. How you doing, my brothers and sisters? Welcome to the weekend. For those of you that don't know me, this might be your first time. My name is Tony M. Tuma, and I talk about relationship. How you doing, Sister Graham? I talk about relationship. I talk about relationship pertaining to that of a man and a woman from a biblical standpoint. When I say a biblical standpoint, I mean from the book of Genesis, God had a unique with the man called Adam. And, and after God established that unique relationship with the man Adam, he called the deep slum to come upon the man. He got the rib by the man's side. He put the man to sleep. He stepped to the side. He formed the woman around the rib. And once he formed the woman around the rib, God represented the woman back to the man. And at that, at that particular point, the man, Adam, he woke up out of his slum and he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I should call her woman because she came from man. So that's the position I come from, my brothers. That's the position I come from, my sister, when it comes to a relationship. So it's going to be very, very clear. I believe in a relationship how God set it up from the beginning of time. With that said, my brothers and sisters, we're about to get into something very, very important. And uh, my brothers and sisters, tonight's topic is how to break a soul tie. How you doing, Sister Taylor? How to break a soul tie. It's hard now. My brother and sister, if you are in a, um, a very difficult relationship, how to break a soul tie is very hard. It's nothing to play with when it comes to a soul tie, my brother and sister. It could be very, very difficult when it comes to a soul tie. Now, let me tell you something. Some people, my brothers and some people, my sister, they get soul tie and they get soul mate somewhat confused. There's a big difference between soul tie and soul mate. And I'm going to break it down to you. Now, a soul tie, my brothers, a soul tie, my sister, is a connection with someone deeply embedded into your soul. Or to say it differently, how you doing, sister, here? Or to say it differently, a spiritual connection or a deep emotional bond between two people oftentimes, and this is the key thing with soul tie, oftentimes form through sex. Now, a soulmate, on the other hand, is a person with whom one has a feeling of deep or natural affection. This may involve similarity like love, romance, platonic friendship, comfort, intimacy, sexuality, sexual activity, spirituality, compatibility, and trust. Now, the thing when it comes to... Um, Soul time, my brother and sister, it's about energy. How you doing, sister uh, Terry? It's about energy. And you brothers and sisters, I'm not talking about the electric, the electric company uh, energy, what they provide for you. I'm talking about energy that a man and a woman have. Now, energy is defined as a spiritual force that is, that is held to uh, emanate 
from or to give animation to a living being. Now, this comes back to the topic that we're going to discuss tonight, how to break a soul tie is very hard. Now, when it comes to a soul tie, my brother and sister, it's going to root back to the spiritual part of your being. Uh, as it is written in 2 Corinthians 6.14, again, this is 2 Corinthians 6.14, God's word states that it said, be not unequally yoked with an unbeliever. That's what God's word said, be not uh, unequally yoked. It's just like this, my brother and sister. If you ever went to a farm a long time ago, they have tractors now. But if you ever went to a farm, how you doing, Sister Scott? They had what is called a yoke. A yoke is used on some animals to help the farmer to break up the ground to plant to uh, plant some seeds. Now, normally the the uh, farmer will have two ox, and that would be this big uh, board. One one uh, ox would be on the left, one ox would be on the right. Then there's this big long board that connect the ox together. So the farmer be behind with this plow, and the ox pull pull the device so the farmer could break up the ground. Now, if you can understand this, if you take one of the ox away and you put a donkey in its place, how you doing, Sister Karen? If you put a donkey in its place, it's not going to work because a donkey on one side and a uh, ox on one side, it's not going to work because they got different temperaments, they got different strengths, and something going to happen. Something's going to happen, so it's unequal to yoke. And this also goes to what we're going to buy soul tie. Another is situation. How you doing, Sister Velma? Now, have any of you ever seen a vampire movie? I know you have seen a vampire movie. Let's take the all-time famous uh, vampire, Count Dracula from Transylvania. What did Dracula uh, do? What is he known for? He known for traveling in the dark. And he known for feasting. What does he do? He normally bite the neck and draw blood. And once he bite the neck of his victim, what normally happens? The victim will come lifeless. The victim will come lifeless because the energy is taken away because the life is in the blood. Remember the topic that we're talking about. We're talking about how to break a soul tie. Now, my brother and sister, let me tell you when it comes to a soul tie. There's nothing casual about sex. And, and also, there's nothing uh, casual about why friends with benefits. Casual sex and friends with benefits, it doesn't work. Casual sex or hookup is a certain type of human sexuality or sexual activity outside the context of a romantic relationship. And when it's outside the uh, context of a romantic relationship, it has to be in the right way. So, let me tell you this. A friend, my brothers, a friend, my sister, is someone other than your family member or your partner. A friend is someone that you share close affection with. That is not nobody that you are uh, have a serious, committed, and covenant relationship with. Also, what is a benefit? A benefit receives an advantage or a profit. So friends with benefits, it doesn't exist. This is a terminology that the world put out there to sustain a, a relationship. When it comes to friends with benefits, believe it or not, it's nothing serious about friends with benefits. There's no commitment when it comes to friends with benefits. And there's no covenant part when it comes to friends with benefits. And this is what happened when it comes to soul tie. You can have a man dating a woman for a long period of time, or it could be a short period of time, or you could have a man and woman living together. And what happens? A soul tie start happening. How does a soul tie normally start happening? This is how a soul tie, not a soul mate, but a soul tie. When you lie down with someone and you have a relationship with that person, as a matter of fact, let me tell you something, my brother and sister. When you lie down with someone, that's a form of signing a contract. No, nope, you might not sign no contract with uh with no pen on a piece of paper, but any time a man and any time a woman lay down with one another, you're not in odds anymore, Dorothy. 
Once you uh, have sex with someone, you're not friends no more. Whatever you had that preceded sex, you're not friends no more. You would you just not friends. Some men, some men, and some women want to project to the other party that hey, we just friends, but we can have some little sex every now and then. It doesn't work that way, my brothers, my sister. You were not designed to just have casual sex with someone. It's very, very important because Sister Vim said, yes, this has been a sign and deliver. That, yes, that's right, Sister Vim. My brother and sister, an unwanted soul tie can affect you. An unwanted soul tie can affect your life for many years. First of all, let me tell you something. Let me give you an example of a soul tie. We're going to look at it from an animal standpoint. If you all ever looked at the animal kingdom, you see a male animal or whatever the male animal is on a female animal, there's no romance to it, right? They just go do it and it's about uh, bringing life into this world. That's how animals do it. Now, humans don't supposed to do it that way. We are made higher than animals. When animals have sex, it's just like boom, 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 boom. It's no romance, it's nothing. They just do it to uh, procreate. Okay, that's all they're doing. They're just getting together to uh, bring some offspring. It's no romantic tie to it. But now when a man and a woman have sex, some men and some women, they think that sex is casual. Far from it. Far from it, my brother. Far from my sister. Even though it is like a man can have sex with a woman, and I have said it before, a man could have sex with a woman and his mind and his emotion might not be attached to that woman as much as that woman uh mind and soul might be that. Now you have some women that try to be like men and do their thing too. But let me tell you something. When you have sex with someone, my brother and sister. There's something that's going to happen after the fact. You see, once you have sex, after you get past all the ooh-ah and all that kind of stuff, something is going to happen. You see, sex, my brother, and sex, my sister, God's original plan was to uh, reproduce, bring in a, another human life. But when a man and woman reproduce, they, that man and woman get pleasure out of it. So what happened now, you have men, and you have women that just want to get together to hook up just to experience the pleasure part of it. But you see, it's deeper than the pleasure part. And this is where the soul tie come in. It can affect your life. Like, I'm going to tell you this. When a man and a woman continue to uh, have sex outside the uh, parameters of being serious, committed in a covenant relationship, something is going to happen, and that's something going to happen. We call it, what, someone's going to catch feeling. It's more than that, and I have explained this before, my brother and sister. When a man and woman has said, it's more than the exchange of body fluids. It's more than the exchange of body fluids. It's energy. So, my brother and sister, when you lay down with one another, it's more than the body is coming together. This is a deep thing. It's the spiritual part and the soul, which lead to soul ties. See, brother and sister, when you continue to have sex with someone and it's not in the parameters of serious uh, committing a covenant relationship, you're going to uh, get feelings. Even some of you don't believe men get feelings, men eventually are going to get some feelings too in it, okay? But it's the wrong type of feeling. I'm going to ask you this, my brother and sister, this question. Why is it that uh, when you have sex with someone and when you get up, listen to what I'm saying, my brother and sister. When you have sex with someone, how you doing, sister uh, Twyla? Remember I said that something happened. My brother and sister, you're not the same no more. Whatever energy in that man, sister, you're going to get some of his energy. Brother, whatever energy in that woman, you're going to get her energy. And we talk about a spiritual part, because remember a man and a woman is made out of 
spirit, soul, and body. So it, in, it involves all three levels of your makeup. So some people think it just limited to the physical part. No, 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 no. You see the soul type, when a man and a woman continues to uh, have mm -hmm. sex with one another, this is what happens. That man and woman, their minds start mer are merging together. That man and woman will start merging together. And that man and woman emotions start uh, lining up and merging together. Why do you think, my brother, and why do you think, my sister, like, a man and a woman are not animals, but some men and women treat sex like they're animals. And if you look at stuff like pornography and stuff, those men and women that do that, eventually they have problems down the road. If you want to check it out, some of them, they commit suicide. Some of them uh, take drugs and all that kind of stuff because it's unnatural just to have sex and think that it's casual and it's no big deal to it. God created mm -hmm. sex for a reason, my brothers. God created sex for a reason, my sister, but God created sex for a soulmate. He did not create it for a soul tie. That's why some brother and sister, when you have sex with someone and you kind of like call yourself want to break off, a man and woman could be in a relationship with someone else but they still tied to another person. You tied to another person because you got confused about it. Just, you thought you were just going to feel it. No, you still carry that person energy around. That's why some of you brother and sister, you think some of you brother and sister, you have experienced someone that you had sex with. You get that feeling like that person hates you. You get that feeling like someone can't stand you and stuff like that. You know why? You know why? Because you're soul tired. Some brothers and sisters, you get hurt. You get hurt because you had sex with the wrong person. Sister uh, uh, Elliot said, sex had always been gratified from day one, which include Adam and Eve. Yes, as long as it's doing, doing the right way. You got that right, sister, as long as it's doing the right way. But let me tell you, sir, that's why sometimes a man and a woman, they could uh, stop having sex with one another. And they could be in a relationship. They could even be married to someone. But they still tied to this other individual because you're so tied to them. And some people, it messes with your mind and you take it into another relationship. How you doing, Sister Sheriff? Whoever you slept with, my brother. Whoever you slept with, my sister, you take it into another relationship because everyone that you had in your past, if you have not been cleansed by the Lord, you taking that other energy into your relationship. So, brother, every woman that you have slept with in your past, if you have not got cleansed through Jesus, you still carrying that energy with you. You think you're not, but you do. And sister, every man that you have slept with, if you have not gotten that cleansed out of you, you carry all those other men energy in you. Even though after the body fluids have been changed, exchanged, you don't wash out all that at all. But you cannot wash energy out. Energy, it doesn't go anywhere. It has to be removed out of you, especially that negative energy. Now, some of you sisters, I can tell you this. Some of you sisters right now, not all of you, but some of you sisters right now, a man that you had sex with or some men that you had sex with, you still thinking about that, those, that man or those men. So you feeling hurt right now. You know why you feeling hurt? Because you so tired to them. You're trying to put your finger mm -hmm. on what's going on. And while you're trying to put your finger on what's going on, you just so tied to it because you did it the wrong way. That's why some of you sisters right now, you are hurt. You are hurt because that man did not do Some women, some of you sisters, not all of you now, I want to make that clear. Some women think if I give a man my body, if I give a man my body, that's going to uh, cause the man to really want to get into me. I'm going to tell you this, sister, you could give a man all the sex you want to. That's not no guarantee that that man is going to be 
uh, want to be in a relationship with you. And some of you guys, you use sex as a control mechanism. Some of you guys think, if I can have sex with her, I can influence her and I can come in and out of her life. That's what some guys do, sister. If they can have sex with you, and if they think that they could put it on you real good, that would get you hooked. And then let me tell you this, sister, sometime. If a man appears to be having what, what he thinks is good sex to you and he calls you to feel a certain type of way, you can get that misconstrued that he loves you. It's not that he loves you. He calls you to feel, per se, good on a physical level. But he did not touch you on a high level. He just touched you. He, the far as he went was your body and your soul. That's the far as he went. He got into your emotions. And you will for let that man get to your mind. That's why some of you sisters right now, uh, not all of you, you continue to get in relationship after relationship look, trying to look for a good man, but you still carrying that negative energy with you. Because uh, Sister uh, Elliot says, sex can't give you control over another person. Um, sister, for, uh, yes, it does. I have seen it. Let me tell you. Let me tell you this, sister. That's, that's your opinion, but let me tell you, I do consultations, okay? I do consultations, and I listen to these people, and a lot of them verify when we actually talk that they, when we really get down to the nitty-gritty, they, they have a sexual addiction to the person. Whenever two people have sex, it involves more than the flesh. It involves the spirit. It involves the soul. And it involves the uh, body. Sister Vim said, thank you for your compliment. I just getting ready to ask that question. Yes, Sister Vim. People do get, uh, people can get sexual addicted to another person. Sometimes a relationship could get down to um, somebody feel like they want to feel wanted or whatever. And then they'll pick up the phone or they'll text someone and they just hook up for sex. They don't have nothing else in common. But even though they don't have nothing else in common, once they get together, they reestablish that little bond. Because when it comes to a soul tie and it's unhealthy, a soul tie is not going to go nowhere, my brother. A soul tie is not going to go nowhere, my sister. It's not going to go on. Now, soulmate, that can go somewhere. But soul tie, they are mostly unhealthy. And that's why when people continue to have uh, sex over and over and over again, you could start, you could have that feeling of anger against a person. You could feel like you want to get even with a person. You could feel hurt because you feel like he or she used me. And that's how a lot of time, especially a lot of your sister, well, if you allow a man to get with you, call, let me tell you something. One of the ultimate things that a lot of men, not all men, because we basically look at a woman uh, from a physical standpoint before a lot of time we try to get to know the woman. That's basically how men does it. We well, do it. Men look at a woman from, basically from a physical point. And the number one thing that majority of men like to do, that worldly men, worldly men, the they want to get between a woman's leg. That's how most worldly men do. They want to get between a woman's leg. And let me tell you this. Let me give you a little history about soul type, my brother and sister. Uh, prior to me getting married, prior to me getting married, and I'm glad that the Lord came into my life. I'm going to tell you this. I know firsthand about soul tie. Before I got married, I had discovered some. I have discovered some sisters. I put it that way. I have discovered some sisters from a soul tie perspective. Soul tie, and I knew it, and it was not like. I misled any of these women. I did not mislead any of these women. I didn't say nothing like we're going to be together. I never lied to them. Some women, they were thinking, like I just told you, some of them were probably thinking that it was going to be a future. Now, it's, it's something when a man lied to a woman 
and say something like, okay, we're going to have this future and everything together. Even though a man or woman, they might agree to like, okay, we're just going to do this, right? We're just going to do this. It's not that easy because someone going to catch some feeling. That's why I lure, alluded to sometimes when a man and woman have sex, sometimes, 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 somebody is going to feel hurt. Someone is going to feel bitter. Someone is going to feel some kind of way. Uh, and I have mentioned it to you, sisters uh, and brothers, one time. If you all remember, I told you all this story. It was this lady some years ago that I got involved with this woman. And did just one incident. This one incident, this young lady and I, we, we was uh, call ourselves messing around, right? And it took me like maybe a year to cut that relationship. You know why it took me a year to uh, cut that relationship? Because she told me that the relationship is not over until she says it's over. She was going through soul tie. You understand? How you doing, Sister Lisa? She was going through the soul tie thing. And to see the thing about it at that particular time, my brothers, and that particular time, my sisters, I have told you all I have been divorced before, right? So at that particular time, I just bring it to those of you that never heard this before. When I was married in the past, the woman and I, at that particular time, we were going through a divorce, right? We had filed the papers and everything. I started seeing this other young lady. She said, if you and your husband, I mean, if you and your wife decide to get back together, let me know. And this is before my current marriage, okay? So, my wife, during that particular time, we decided to get back together. And I told her what was going on. And she told me to end a relationship with that other lady. The lady had told me, now, if you and your wife decide to get back together, tell me. So, I went and told the lady. And she said, if you... If you and your wife get back together, I'll be cool with it. But that was a lie. She wasn't cool with it. It took me a year to get rid of that lady. You know why it took a year? Because that was a soul tie. What some of you people have seen the movie Fatal Attraction. Michael Douglas and Glenn Close. Remember how Glenn Close were acting? That was a soul tie. It was this other movie. It's a whole bunch of movies out there. But a lot of that stuff, my brother, a lot of stuff, my sister, that stuff is based on real life. And I'm telling you, I have touched the stove for some of you before. Don't get involved with no one if you don't plan on being serious, if you don't plan on being committed, and you don't plan on doing the covenant part because that stuff is real. That's why God... Don't want no man or no woman to have sexual intercourse unless he or she married because sex is powerful. Sex is, is nothing casual about it. Even when you want to play friends with benefit, there's no such thing as friends with benefit. That is just a phrase that coined for people that probably live together and the man acting like he married to the woman and the woman act like she married to the man and they playing husband and wife, they playing how, but they're not covenant before God. So when that man and woman playing husband and wife, the feelings and everything get involved. That's why when one of them decide to break up, this, this, the feeling and everything still lingering because your souls are together. Your souls are combined together. It's deep, my brother and sister. The physical part of sex is temporary. But when it get when you touch a person's mind, will, and emotion, that goes on for years. And when a man and woman have not resolved uh, a soul tie, you're going to take it into another relationship because you got that man energy, sister. His energy is in you. Brother, your energy of that woman is in uh, you. You can't get rid of, you think you done got rid of. That's why some people say, and I know you have heard this before, 
she got a whole bunch of baggage coming into the relationship from other men, or he got a whole bunch of baggage. You know what the real baggage is? The real baggage is the soul tie because of what happened in the past. That's why right now, some men and women, they'll break up because of something with that other person. And a lot of time, that man and woman, they get someone that's similar to the person that they have just broke breaking up with. You understand? That's what some of them do because they got that energy and they keep going back. And let me tell you this about a soul tie. When you have sex with someone and it's unhealthy, it's just like this. Most people that experience crack, most people that experience crack, what they normally do is first they, they experiment with it. Most people that are hooked on crack, you all know what I'm talking about, or cocaine, whatever you want to say, it's, it had a starting point. And the starting point was they was uh, curious about it. So they they took that substance and they got they got high, right? And they uh, liked the feeling, right? So what they did, most of them thought that they could control it, right? So they go back to the source and they get some more cocaine and get some more cocaine. And what they did not realize is slowly the cocaine was taking over them. Most people that got get hooked into an addiction, most of them think that they can always beat it or they, they are an exception to the rule. But you're not no exception to the rule. You cannot... Um, do it. And that's just like this too, my brother and sister. When you have, when you continue to have sex with a person that you're not in a very serious relationship with, and I keep saying it, you have to be serious, it has to be commitment, and it needs to be covenant. When I say covenant, if you know that I keep saying covenant, that's before God. Because God wants a man and a woman. There's nothing wrong with sex. God want a man or woman to be married. If you're not married, you can have a problem when you get married, but if you're not married, you're just setting yourself up for some things to happen down the road. What happened when you have uh, the unhealthy soul ties? You talking about you can get herpes. You can talk about you can get all these other diseases. You can have pregnancy that was not planned and all that kind of stuff coming out of soul time. Mm -hmm. So this is what happened. How you doing, Brother Nate? Like, for example, a man and a woman that have a child together and they're not married. That child is a constant reminder of what they did to get that child. Say, for example... The mama and the mama is pissed off at the dad. This is just an example. Just say that the mama is hurt because the dad went on with his life. And she got the child. This is just an example. She look at that child, and that child is a reminder that that child came from that man because they had sex together. So she might decide. How you doing, Sister Sheriff? She might decide to treat that child wrong. The child did not have nothing to do with his or her mother and father getting together to have sex. So the woman and the woman got so tied to the man, right? And he gone on with his life. So she hate so she hate the man. And let's say, for example, the man wants to spend time with the child, but the man he gone with his life, and then the woman, she might want to play this kind of thing with the children. I don't want him to see my child. You understand? I don't want him to see my child. And some women do that. Believe it or not, my brother and sister, some women do that. The man wants to spend time with his child, and he look at it like this is business. You and I, we did what we were going to do, and now the woman playing games with the children. And then some men, they pay child support. Now, well, you know, some men do, some men don't. But I'm talking about those that be paying child support. What am I talking about? The man could actually be paying child support to the woman with cash or whatever. She find out that the man is dating someone else, okay? Once she find out that the man is dating someone else, and lo, lo and behold, don't let her find out that the man about to marry somebody else. 
Then she want to go down to the court system and take out child support. You understand? Then she want to take out child support. All of this comes from sex, soul time, and it wasn't no, and it wasn't no serious, committed, and covenant relationship. Things like that happen. And then you can have it on the flip side. The man and the woman had a child together from a, a, a soul tie, right? The woman go on with her life. The woman might say something like, I want you to keep the children this weekend. The children tell the daddy, my mama got a boyfriend. And the daddy, he think that if he keep the children, that give the woman more liberty to do something with this man. So the mama saying, I want you to keep the children this weekend. And he find out that she got a boyfriend or whatever. He don't want to keep the children. Because he think if I keep the children, she can't be going out with her man. Grown people be playing game with the children because of soul ties. Unhealthy soul ties. So what am I saying? When it comes to a soul tie, my brother and sister, it's very difficult to break them. It's very, very difficult to break them. And that's why right now today, I do consultation with some brothers and some sisters. They get to the point where they're trying to move on with their lives, right? But they're still holding on to another person. There are some married people right now. you still tied to another person. When you get in a relationship and the relationship is not going, working the way you're supposed to, I have said this before over and over again. Cheryl said the daddy will not keep the children because or the mom is in a new relation. And not. that's right, Sister Cheryl. But you see, and stuff like that happens. I tell you what I hear, my brothers. I tell you what I hear, my sister. It, that stuff happens because of the soul tie. And it was wrong. That's why when you keep playing with fire, you're going to get burnt. And I, myself, my brother and sister, I have touched the stove for you. Brother and sister, some other people that I be talking to you all about, they have touched the stove too. So why am I telling you this? Because the stove is hot. I was not no exception to the rule. Some of the people, men and women that talk to me, they're not no exception to the rule. Brother and sister, you not no exception to the rule. If you're doing something with someone else, and it's not your soulmate. You see, your soulmate, as I said earlier, the soulmate is a person with whom one has feeling of deep or uh, natural affection. This may involve similarities, love, romance, platonic friendship, comfort, intimacy, uh, sexual activity, spirituality, and compatibility, which leads to trust. You understand? At least true. Now let me tell you this. Some brothers and sisters right now, you're going through a relationship with a man or a woman. You're going through a relationship with a man or a woman. You know right now that that man, some of you sisters, you know right now that that man doesn't want you. You know it. Some of you brothers, you're going through a relationship right now with a woman and you know that he don't, she don't want you. But you're trying to hold on. You know why you're trying to hold on? You know why you're trying to hold on? Because this is what I'm telling you. When it comes to if you're not in the right type of relationship. You see the thing about it my brother and sister. God designed a relationship to go one way. But when we decide to take a relationship another way. That's where all the, the uh, hurt come in. That's where all the pain come in. And all that other stuff come in. Because we don't want to do it God's way. This is the way the world want to do it. The world want to do it like this. Boyfriend, girlfriend. This is what the world want to do. Boyfriend, girlfriend. Or we live together. I don't... That marriage that marriage, uh, piece of paper, that's all it is. It's just a piece of paper. That's all it is. They don't marry. We marry without paper. You see, they don't want to do it God's way. That's why right now today as I'm speaking... There's somebody that's listening to me, to me today that you're holding on to a relationship and you know that person doesn't want you. He or she doesn't want you. 
Most of the time, that person just wants you for sex. And you don't want to face it. He or she is seeing other people. But you, that's right, shaking up. You just keep having sex with that person. That's the only thing that person wants from you. And if that person doesn't have sex with you, you won't hear from him or her. Because you're still giving that to him or her. Sex. And that's why some of you people are messed up right now. You clearly see it, but you hold it on. That man or that woman going on with his or her life. That right, Sister Flo. That man or woman going on with his or her life, but you tied to him. That's why I tell you, my brother, and that's why I tell you, my sister. Let me tell you something, my brother and sister. Let me tell you this. Listen to this. Listen to this. If if a sister, if a man showing you in his mind, if a man point blank showing you that he don't want to spend time with you, if a man doing other thing with other people, if a man just come to you only for sex, that should tell you something. A lot of time, so some of you sisters, you know that he's seeing somebody else or other people. You know it. He barely want to take you anywhere. Or he may take you somewhere every now and then. Most of the time when he want to see you is after 12 o'clock at night. He texts you or he calls you and says, what you doing? You do it. The 4th of July coming up. I'm going to tell you, this, my sister, the 4th of July coming up. A holiday. And you holding on to this man. That man going to be with who he want to on the 4th of July. And he might see you at the end of the 4th of July. Or he might see you a day or so after. Velma said, going out of town with friends with, without you. What that's about. What that is about this. When a man and a woman said, I'm going out of town with some friends without you. That's showing you that you're not having that person priority list. Because if you was in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship, if you do it, did it the right way, you supposed to be second place after the Lord. The Lord is the only one that get top priority in a relationship. After that, brothers and sisters, if you are in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship, the second most important uh, position is your mate, not family and not friends. If a person like Velma said, I'm going out of town with friends, most of the time when someone says I'm going out of town with friends, a lot of time that friend, it, that's a cloak. That's a cover. If it's a man, more than likely it's a woman. And vice versa. If they just said friend, that's a cloak a lot of time. Why would a man or a woman want to go with him? Uh, friends and stuff instead of you. And we know about the holidays and stuff, don't we? We know about anniversary holidays and stuff. What is that telling you? Most couples, most couples want to be with their uh, significant other than their family and friends. Now, the family and friend could be a part of it, but when they leave you out, they're telling you something. They're telling you a whole lot. But you holding on. You know why you holding on? Because you have an unhealthy soul tie. You're not soul mates. It's a soul tie. It's a difference between soul mate and soul tie. Sometimes, some of you brothers and sisters, you're going to get to the point, your family, your family have talked to you about it. Your friends have talked to you about it. If you had, had some type of uh, counseling, your counselor have told you about it. 
you're going to have to get to the point where you get tired of being tired. If you don't do it, you're going to take that unhealthy relationship into another one. And you still got that person energy in you. It has to be broken. The only way an unhealthy soul tie can be broken is with Jesus first. With Jesus first, it, then you have to be to yourself. It's like uh, you have to concentrate yourself. Uh, no, not concentrate. Sanctify yourself. You got to pull yourself away from it. You have to have a relationship with Jesus because Jesus is the only one that's going to break it. You can't, you can go to, you can go to all these counseling things. How you doing, uh, Sister Henderson? You can go to all these counseling things. You can talk with your boys, your girl, your family, stuff like that. But if you have an unhealthy soul tie, the only person that's going to break it is Jesus. Only Jesus. Because if he doesn't break it, if you don't go to him, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some serious problems. That's why some of you right now, a man or woman can go out your life and they could call you or text you and you trying to pull away from them. You, they call you and text you and you feel so good. You feel so good and that man or woman just come to you just to have sex with you. And that's it. Unhealthy soul tie. And you think that there's hope. There's not no hope. There's not no hope because, like I said, there's nothing casual about hookup. Nothing casual at all. You're going to have to do it God's way or your way. You do it your way, you're going to be touching the stove. Like I have done and other people have done. When I talk to you, brother, when I talk to you, sister, I try to prevent you from touching the stove because I keep telling you that the stove is hot. Don't do it. You are not no exception to the rule. Vail said, thank you, Tony. He heard my question and said that I need to stop listening to you. Thank you for, yeah, you know why? You know why he's saying he wants you to stop listening to me, Vail? Let me tell you why this man wants you to stop listening to me. Because I know men. I'm a man. I know how we think. I have played the role. I have played Velma. I have been down that road, Velma. That guy that with you, Velma, he playing you. He wants you to he wants you to not see where he's coming from. I see where he's coming from. He wants to play like he wants to play like he going out of town with his friend, Velma. That's what he want to do. He playing like he going. He going with, with a woman, uh, Velma. He's not going with no man. He going with a woman. He don't want. That's why he don't want you to listen to me. And I don't even have to be around him. I know what we do. He's lying to you. You're going to have to cut it with him. You got to stop. You got to stop talking to him. You got to stop, uh, you got to block. If he call you, you got to change your number. You got to block him. If he's on social media, you got to block him. Everything you got to do, you got to block, 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 block. If he having, if you continue to have sex with this man, if you continue, if you continue, he going to keep holding on to you. That's right. Velma, let me tell you this, Velma. And this for you other sisters too. Let me tell you this, sisters. It's okay to be with your friends. It's okay. Like women can have friends, men can have friends. Nothing wrong with it. But when a man, because it starts with us, the man's supposed to be the head and the leader of the relationship. The only person that's supposed to come before you, sisters, is only Jesus. No family members, no friends, no career, no jobs come before you. 
anyone that comes before you, how you doing, mother? Any woman or anybody or anything that comes before you, that man's telling you something, and that goes for some of you brothers too. The only person that comes before you, brother, in a relationship with a woman is Jesus himself. Not family, not friends, not job, not no career. It's the Lord and your mate. That's why you have to do, you should do it God's way. God's way is be serious, be committed, and do the covenant thing. That's the only thing that God requires. When we do it our way, we're going to put ourselves in a position to be hurt, bamboozled, and feel like you want to commit suicide. There are some brothers and sisters, you, you have got, a, you didn't let a person get you so soul tired where you think there's no hope. You think there's no hope. You want to, you want to get a knife right now and you want to get your wrist and slit it and watch it bleed. You want to take some pills and think they're going to take your pain away. You want to walk across the highway and not look both ways and get hit by a Mack truck. You think that's it. Some of you brothers and some of you sisters, when you, let me tell you something, some of those that's on the brink of taking your life. Your problem would just be starting right then because you're going into eternity. Let me tell you about eternity. You don't get no second chances in eternity. Not whatsoever. You don't get no second chance in eternity. You're not going to kill yourself and think you're going before Jesus and think Jesus is going to give you no break. Jesus is not going to give you no break if you kill yourself and go into eternity. Because what you're saying is when you take your life over some clown, sister, this man, a clown, he don't love you. He lusts you. It's a difference between being lust and love. When, let's, let's talk tonight. When his penis get hard, that's when he want to see you. Or another one. If you keep allowing this man to have access to you, he's going to continue to affect your mind. He's going to affect your, your will and your emotions. You're going to go around telling people that he doing this, he doing that. Those people going to start, they go, they get tired. You go tell your, your friends. They try to comfort you. You go tell your parents. They try to come. I mean, your, your family, your friend, you go to talk to your coworkers. And you just, you go talk to your coworkers. You tell them everything. Your coworker, your family, friend, guess what? They get tired of listening to it. When they get tired of listening to when you turn your back, they start talking about you. They go for your brother and sister. They start talking about you. They say stuff like you stupid. I don't want to hear this. We told you what to do, but you still want to do it. That's what some of you be doing. You still want to do it. And then what make it worse is that you want to get on some people, men and women, they want to get on Facebook and social media and tell all of us so we could get some of Flo's popcorn and we're going to enjoy the show. You put yourself out there, some of you brothers and sisters, and you tell people, you know, some of you brothers and sisters, you have seen some men and women do this. They be lovey-dovey on social media, right? Then something happened, and then they come on social media, Facebook, let's say Facebook, you see one of them coming up there talking about his or her mate, right? They, they might not call the name, but we know who you are. We know you talk about your mate, right? Then your mate might come up there and say something. We know who he or she talking about. Then when you, you put all that stuff out there on Facebook, then you get all these people that want to counsel you. All these people that counseling you on Facebook, they want to give you suggestions. Note what they want to do is continue to put logs in the fire. What happens when you continue to put logs in the fire? 
this is what happened. The fire keep burning. And you begin, to, some of you brothers and sisters, you continue to get these Facebook people lost in the fire. And some of you can't see it. All they want to do is be nosy in your business. Then one day, you're going to get back on Facebook. You're going to be hugging and kissing. You're going to be out of time. You love each other. And all we be waiting to see is we already know what's going to happen. It's a cycle. You, you love it, dub it now. And in a few days, you're going to be talking about each other. You're going to come on there and throw shades on your mate, right? We get used to it. We already know what's going to happen. We know it. And you put yourself out there. Then when somebody come and say something, then some of you, some of you brothers will say, y'all just hating. You just hate because me and my mate this and me and my mate that. We just hating. That's a lie. When people don't be hating, you give them a free show by putting your business out there on the street, some of you brothers and sisters. That's what some of you do. Stop doing it. Sister Velma, let me tell you this. Back to you. That guy who don't want you to listen to me, you know why he don't want you to listen to me? Because I know his nature. I'm a man. I know how we operate. He don't want me to tell you the game, Velma. He don't want me to tell you the game. As a matter of fact, he could come on the show right now and talk live. If he wanna, if he wanna be a man, I could get I won't charge you for this. If he wanna be a man, he could come on my show right now and we could talk about it. And I would tell him that he's not being a man to you. He wanna be in the background talking through you. No, be a man and come on my live show. I'll let you come on right now and I could tell you what you're doing to that woman. That's why you don't want her to listen to me. That's why. Because I'm telling the truth. Come on. Tell him to come on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I accept his invitation because everyone want to see this. Everyone want to see this showdown. Come on. We, on the, we at the OK Corral. Come on, brother. Come on. You watching me now, right? Come on. Come on. I'm inviting you to my show. Come on. Come on. I'm going to be respectable. If you come on, be respectable. Bring it on. I'm going to tell you what you're doing. I know what you're doing. you trying to play her. You don't want her to go out of time with you because you're taking another woman with you. That's what you're doing. That's why you say your friend. It's not your friend. It's a woman that's what you're taking. Because if Velma was important to you, brother, if you listen to me, if Velma was important to you, she would be the one that you're taking with you. No, you don't want to do that. You want to see her when you get back. That's the game you're playing. You're playing a game. And I know your game, brother, because I'm a man. I know the games we play, and that's what you're doing. Come on now. Come on, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. There's a thing called, there's two type of birds. There's a bird that's called an eagle, and there's a bird that's called a chicken. Which one are you, brother? Come on out. Are you an eagle or are you a chicken? Which one? I'm waiting. I know what kind of bird you are. I already know. We all know. Anyway, brothers and sisters, I really, really enjoyed this show. Didn't you all enjoy this show tonight? And guess what? I'm going to come with another good topic tomorrow night. I love your brothers. I love your sister. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Sister Flo, for the popcorn and soda. Thank you, brother and sister, for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on out. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. I love you, brothers. I love you, sisters. Peace.